Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. So we continue with revision from past paper questions. Okay, in this video, uh, we are going to learn about mode. We discussed about mean, we discussed about quartiles, median, percentiles, etc. And we had a kind of like rough discussion about uh, standard deviation and stuff. So the only thing we did not discuss and they might ask is the mode. So remember mode is a measurement of central tendency. Like I told you in the last video, all the central tendency measurements has the same idea. We need the rough central part of the data. Because we need two things. One is the central tendency and the next one is the dispersion. Once you know the central tendency, you kind of like know the midpoint of the distribution. And once you know the dispersion or the deviation, you'll be able to calculate how far the data are spread in that uh, spread from the central value. Okay, now mode means the most repeated value in the data. And you might be interested to know that mode is uh, like what you call used in the ready-made industry. For example, when they produce ready-made shirts or shoes or any ready-made goods, even the phones that we get in our market, the laptops that we get in our market, they are not tailored uh, things. They are all, they are all ready-made. So uh, when it comes to ready-made goods, the production, the production will be mass production, of course. So the, uh, in order to make the profit maximum, they must know the size of the customers, right? They have to produce the garments, they have to produce the shoes, the phones, the laptops, everything in such a way that maximum number of people will be benefited. Okay, now look at this. So mode basically stands for the most repeated item. So if you know the mode, for example, um, like what you call a new shoe company wants to know the mode of the what you call shoe size demanded by people in Nepal. So what they do is they go to uh, like what you call many shops which shall sell shoes and collect data. And once they find the mode, let's say size 38 is the mode. And if they know size 38 is the mode, the next thing that they will collect is the dispersion, standard deviation or any other dispersion measurement which suits normally standard deviation. Let's say they found the standard deviation to be uh, 5. So they can understand that most of the customers, most of the customers uh, will demand the shoes between 38 plus 5 and 38 minus 5. And actually it follows a normal distribution. Normally this height, weight, size, etc. These fall into the category of normal distribution. So uh, once you, uh, you I, I'm sure you already learned about normal distribution. So approximately 70 percentage, to be honest, 68 point something something, percentage will be uh, like what you call demanding for the size between 38 minus 5 and 38 plus 5. And 96 percentage or approximately 95 percentage of the people will be demanding for size between 38 plus 2 into 5. That is 38 plus 2 times sigma and 38 minus 2 times sigma. Anyway, mode is uh, like what you call the most repeated item in the data set. Now look at this. Mode is very easy to compute. And by the way, you have to remember, sometimes mode may not exist. Okay. So, uh, look at this data. So, 20, uh, 20 repeats two times, right? And 30 doesn't repeat, 31 does not repeat, 25, 23. So, the mode is 20. So, basically, the most repeated item or the item with the maximum frequency is the mode. In type 2, here also, it's very easy to calculate the mode because I can see that the mark 30 repeats again and again and again and again seven times which is more than any other number I mean the frequency available here now look at the last type in this type 
it is not that easy so we go for the method you learned in class 10 or maybe in class 12 but I notice one thing look at this the most repeated value lies between 25 and 30 so approximately I know that the mode will be something like 27.5 but there is a correction factor that you have to learn this is just the approximate value and if you write like this they won't give you mark but when you are in the industry etc it's easy to understand okay it might be somewhere near 27.5 okay now look at this uh, I will recommend uh, you to take a screenshot of this question it's from 2070 and I have seen this question once or twice that's it um, anyway the median we already discussed in another video so we'll discuss about the mode so look at this what we do is we find the model class I have explained it here the class with maximum repetition and I'm going to call that frequency as f1 the frequency above that f0 the frequency after that f2 and of course the model class and all these things are explained here and again I made the same mistake the lower bound the lower boundary and that's it you go for the calculation and you can find the mode see if you approximate it you might think that the mode is 55 I mean the I told you earlier the most repetition happens here so the model class is here so approximately it is 55 so look at this this is much much better than that approximate value. now my aim is to uh, discuss uh, what you call a few things uh, that they are regularly asking for example this particular question this question has been repeated um, I'll show you the question paper if you want or you can take the question paper and check it to yourself this particular question uh, has been repeated many times okay now there is a big problem with this question you might think that this is type 3 type 3 means what's the name continuous distribution but sadly this is not continuous I don't see any continuity here it keeps on breaking look 79 and it breaks 99 and it breaks so basically the data is not continuous it's not a big deal you might have learned about how to add the correction factor so what you do is you calculate the difference between 60 and 59 which turns out to be 1 and divide it by 2 so that gives me 0.5 so what you do is you add 0.5 here and you subtract 0.5 here so that we are able to make we are able to make the data continuous so you can see the data is now in continuous format and this question is like really different because they want you to find the missing frequency so I am assuming let the required frequencies be f1 and f2 where f1 belongs to this and f2 belongs to this. Now do you remember the method that we learned to calculate median because look at this the median value is already given. The median value is already given. So I hope you remember the method if not you can pause this video and like what you call you can watch the other video you can understand that method and come back. Anyway. Uh, one thing I know is the sum of all the frequencies the sum of all the frequencies that is 600 plus f1 plus f2 uh, f1 plus f2 will be equal to 1000 because it is already given in the question the expenditure of 1000 families are given here okay so that gave me one equation connecting f1 and f2 now in mathematics you already learned that if you want to solve for two unknowns you need two linear equations so I'm going to find the second equation and I'll, I'll get the second equation with the help of this median so I know the median class is 79.5 to 99.5 can you tell me why and how I got that very simple the median is given to be 87 the median is given to be 87 and 87 of course belongs to the 
range 79.5 and 99.5 so i got the median class i got the frequency of the median class and i got the frequency just i mean cumulative frequency just above the median class so we are ready for the calculation so i plug in all the values that i know the median value the lower bound etc 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 and that gives me the value of f1 <clears throat> now look at this there is a small problem here uh, frequency came in decimal that that's not possible because we always say there will be five objects 10 objects uh, 20 data item so basically this doesn't make sense so one possibility is you can take f1 to be 263 and then you plug it into the relation over here um, we got this first equation f1 plus f2 equal to 400 and you'll be able to find f2 another option you have is f1 you can take uh, 262 and find f2 so there'll be two possible answers Answer number one, 263 and its combination, uh, that will be the difference from 400 and 262 and the combination. Now, another question that I saw once or twice, it, it has repeated once or twice, is this question. So it is given that the mean weight of 100 students, now look at this, these are very, very simple questions. Uh, these are from your basic level statistics, maybe class 10 statistics, etc. And you should be good with the formula for combined mean, combined standard deviation and all. So, um, I'll show you the formula first. So, we have the formula page. So, I think you can see the formula for combined mean. Okay, you can take a screenshot. And similarly, we have formula for combined standard deviation. Okay, you can take a screenshot of this also. So, look at this. The mean weight of 100 students in a certain class is 59. The mean weight of boys in the class is 65 and girls in the class is 50. Find the number of boys and number of girls. Anyhow, I'm 99% sure that most of you using your logic will be able to solve. Provided you remember the formula for arithmetic mean is sum of all the data items divided by n and always remember if you cross multiply um, then you'll be able to find the sum of all the data items uh, i'm calling the number of boys to be nb and the number of girls to be ng so that the sum will be equal to 100 it's given there are 100 students and second thing i'm going to write is the combined mean is given to be 59 the combined mean is given to be 59 so I'm plugging in all those stuff and I got the second equation now take a calculator and solve the two equations don't waste your time solving in using the methods you learned long back the university has allowed a calculator so use the calculator solve the two equations equation 1 and equation 2 and that's it and once more, I'm warning you, it's really nice that you're watching these videos. But remember, you have to take pen and paper and work out the problems. Only if you practice, you'll be able to get marks. Otherwise, you'll understand it, you might forget it, and you may not be confident in your exam. So if you want to score marks, make sure you practice uh, the same question and take the question paper, practice more questions of the same type, and then in exam time you'll be very very confident okay now another type of question this was asked two or three times you can check the past paper questions this was asked like two or three times so look at this the mean and standard deviation of 20 items was found to be 10 and 2 and later they understood that there was an error in the data you got the point there was an error in the data they miscalculated the miscalculated values are 10 and 2 now they found the culprit they found that 8 the data item the data item 8 was the incorrect data so they are asking you to recalculate recalculate and find the correct mean and the corrected standard deviation and there are two cases given 
in case number one they want you to delete that item and calculate the mean for the remaining item mean and standard deviation and in option number two they are asking you to delete eight but input the correct value 12 and recalculate okay so i think you took a screenshot of the question so let's start so look at this n equal to 20 mean is equal to 10 standard deviation is 2 so we are applying the formula and i found the sum of items i found the sum of squares of items i hope you got the same answer please try it yourself there might be some small errors here make sure this answer confirm this answer confirm whether you are able to get the same answer or not okay now look at this what we have calculated here is the wrong sum and is the wrong sum of the squares because they told you at the last one data item namely 8 was incorrect so what we do is uh, we go for option number A. So once you delete an item, you should remember there will be only 19 items left. So the new summation will be the old summation minus 8. So we got the new arithmetic mean. And similarly, we got the new standard deviation. Once more, I want you to confirm whether you are getting the same answer or not. Okay, now we go for the second option. The omitted value is replaced with 12. We are deleting 8, but we are plugging in 12. So basically, there will be no change in the number of items because 8 is deleted, but we introduced a new number. So the number of items will be 20. Okay, now the new summation will be, so what are we supposed to do? We delete 8, so we are subtracting 8 from the sum but we are adding 12 to the sum so we got the new mean and in sum of squares we are deleting 8 squared and adding 12 squared and we end up with the new standard deviation so confirm your answers put down below in the comment section whether you are getting the same answer or not okay now another question that is related to um, yeah they have asked once I guess I have seen this question only once so it's nothing you just apply the formula you get the combined mean so they have asked another question also which company pays larger amount uh, in the previous video we talked about arithmetic mean and standard deviation and coefficient of variation I told you if you want to compare the numbers, if you want to com compare the actual amount, we will always use arithmetic mean. And for consistency, we use standard deviation or coefficient of variation. Anyway, I calculated the coefficient of variation. So I understood that company A shows more variability. I hope you remember coefficient of variation. So please remember the coefficient of variation is standard deviation by arithmetic mean so what we do here is we find the coefficient of variation once more let me uh, tell you it is standard deviation by arithmetic mean multiplied by 100 uh, if you want it in percentage um, okay so we have the combined mean over here just apply the formula all these things are given here and the formula for combined standard deviation the main part is uh, please try this yourself pause the video or take a screenshot try it yourself and check whether you are getting the same answer or not okay that's it with this video so i'll be back with another video very soon so till then 